Thank you and bless you this morning. What a wonderful day this is. This is the day that you have made, and we do rejoice, and we are glad in it. Father, I come in agreement with my early devotional prayer that at this time, the hour of teaching and preaching, I am totally decreased, and I give you full permission to increase. It's going to be all of you and none of me in operation. Your spirit, your Holy Spirit, the true teacher of the church will teach with me and through me and for me for these your precious people. And I thank you, Father God, that seed will not fall on uh, bad ground, but it will fall on good ground. The hearts will be open to receive. And I thank you that the ears will be anointed to hear and the minds will be anointed to comprehend and that by the Spirit of God, the Word of God will now become particular, peculiar, and specific to their specific situation in their life. That's my prayer. And that after they hear the Word, that they will be hearers, not only hearers, but doers of the Word, and then walk in what they've been taught. And if you agree with that prayer, say, by faith, by faith, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and thank God. And thank God. In the book of Romans, chapter number 4, in the book of Romans, chapter number 4, we find our foundational text for uh, what is now a full-blown series. Uh, if you were here last week, I told you that it was part one, and I told you that I'd be back next week with probably part two, and we'd probably be finished. But a funny thing happened on the way to next Sunday. Amen? <laughs> the Lord has his will and has his way. And so we're in a full-blown series. And I want to let you know right now that the Lord told me to slow down. He said, as good as the message was last week, he said, don't rush this because there's some stuff here that we need to see. So since he told me to slow down, I'm telling you to slow down with me, and let's get all out of this that we can. If you're with pastor, say amen. Amen. All right, Romans chapter 4, verse 19 says, and, and being not weak in faith, he, meaning Abraham, considered not his own body now dead. In other words, he didn't consider the facts or the, the temporal circumstances. When he was about 100 years old, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot not to consider, huh? Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. In other words, he didn't consider his own uh, natural weaknesses when he was 100 years old, nor did he consider his wife's natural weaknesses and she was 90 years old. Somebody say amen. amen. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Huh. He staggered staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, faith giving glory to God. In other words, he, 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 didn't, uh, he didn't become shaky in the face of the promise. He became strong in faith in the face of the promise, which lets you know that you have one or two uh, responses. It's either going to be one or the other. The promise was the same, right? But you could either, you, you'll either... Uh, become unsettled and shaky in the face of what he's saying because what he's saying sounds like it's not going it doesn't make any sense it doesn't uh, it doesn't equate to what you see what God says is more times than not not going to equate with what you see amen so either you're going to stagger or you're going to become uh, uh, very uh, diffident lack of confidence at, 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 at the promise because of what you see or you're going to be confident in the promise in spite of what you see. Amen? And so he says he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Somebody say, I need to be fully persuaded. Well, oh, I'm telling you, that's a, that's a good title right there. Being fully persuaded. You, 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 this, is, this is telling us something that, that many of us are not fully persuaded. Well, and we have to become fully persuaded. Say, I need to be fully persuaded. I need to be fully persuaded. Yeah, that what God said, God said he can do. He can do. So, so that lets me know that your persuasion or your uh, conviction or your confidence has to be in the ability of God. 
The only reason why you're not fully persuaded is because you think God can't handle what you see. Come on now. You think, you think that what you see is stronger than what God can do. You looking at your debt, you looking at your finances, and you say, that's, that's stronger than what God can do. Somebody say, no, God's strong. Say, he's able. He's able. Say, I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. The question is, are you fully persuaded? Yeah. Yeah. See, because when you're fully persuaded, you won't waver. That's, that's, I think that's really what the vision, he said, he staggered not at the promise of God. He, he didn't waver. And, and in fact, if there's, a, if there's a real thread in the day's message, it's really going to be about not wavering. It's going to be about not wavering. Can, you, can I get an amen? amen? All right, now listen, listen. Why do you need faith? This is review, okay? So if you weren't here last Sunday, this is review. If you were here last Sunday, this is review, okay? Somebody say, this is review. Why do you need faith? To interact with God. Or, or you can say it like that, to walk with God. You need faith to walk with God. In fact, I submit to you, I submit to you that the number one reason you need faith is to walk with God. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Say amen. amen. See, see, the faith movement that was championed by a lot of great men of God that is now being criticized by other people saying, well, the faith movement was, it, it, it was wrong or it's obsolete. It's not that it was wrong and it's not that it was obsolete. It was just a little out of focus. Okay. All right. The focus, it got out of focus. The focus started... Uh, being on how you needed faith to get material things. Okay. Okay. All right. But I'm here to but I'm here to tell you that's not the highest focus of faith. Yes. Sir. But I'm also here to tell you that it that it is a focus of faith. All right. Because you need faith when you don't see none, no money in your account. You need faith to say that Come on. my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory by yes, Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But. When I was away this week on a couple of uh, days away, um, Reverend and I had a little holiday this week, thank the Lord, based on the favor of God. God spoke something to me. He showed me this. He said, if you put faith and you connect it with, if you take the faith teaching and you connect it with the true prosperity teaching, you get the whole picture. All right. In other words, that's why I spent a whole year teaching y'all about True prosperity. Now, I, I got to say this. True prosperity, I've defined it a lot of different ways, but if you just get this, I'm, I'm saying the most easiest way I can so you can remember. True prosperity is true priorities. Okay? Right. Would you please write that down? Would you write it down, and if you don't have a pen, write it on the, the, the tablet of your heart. Say it with me. Say, true prosperity, true prosperity is true priorities. Is true priorities. Yeah, that, that's, I, I spent a whole year just to tell you just that. That's all I was really trying to tell you. And what I was trying to tell you is the number one priority is what? Spiritual, right? Yeah. Then what? Then mental. mental. Then physical. And lastly, what? Material, material or financial. You can call it either one, material or financial. So what am I saying? I'm saying if you take the faith teaching and you take the true prosperity teaching and you put them together, what you find is that you need faith to have prosperity on each of those levels. Spiritual, yes. mental, yes. physical, and material. The, the lowest level is material, which means that God wants you to be materially blessed. Yes. He just doesn't want that to be your priority over what? Spiritual, mental, and physical. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, he wants you to be materially blessed. The problem is the world wants you to chase just that, when really the number one reason why you need faith is so that your spiritual relationship yes. with the Father through the Son is where it's supposed to be. And everything else will fall in place. Give God some praise if you understand what I'm talking about. Man, that's one of the reasons why Matthew 6.33 is the key scripture for the true prosperity teaching. Seek ye first. Somebody say first. first. I'm so glad you know it. Actually, when, that's where I got the revelation. When I kept meditating on that scripture... I got the revelation. He said, seek me. You know what seek means? Yes. It means to pursue. Yes. It means to chase after. Uh -huh. it, means to, it means to 
find something out. It, it, it means it, it's what you are focusing all your energy and time on. Somebody say C. C. So if I'm focusing all my energy and time on making money, I can miss God. That's right. I can end up having some money and going to hell. Whoa. What profit a man if he gained the whole world and what? Lose his soul. That was another scripture God brought to my attention. So my point is that he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, if you are meditating and contemplating and thinking about this, there's something that ought to jump out at you right away. Seek ye first something that you can't see with your natural eye. All right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. The kingdom of God cannot be seen. The kingdom of God is within you. Yes. It's in your heart. It's a spiritual kingdom. You, yes. How are you going to seek something you can't see with your natural eye? Right. With your spiritual eye. With your spiritual ears. Yes. See what I'm saying? So, how are you going to seek it? By faith. You have to read his word. You're going to have to pray in the spirit. And that's how you seek it. Then it says, seek you first the kingdom of God. And his what? And his righteousness. righteousness. Oh. So, if I'm seeking his kingdom, the very thing that's right with that is, I'm trying to find out about how to be right with God and stay what? Say, that's my number one priority. That's my number one priority. Turn your next and say, that's your number one priority. Number one priority. Now see, the world will have you believe in that everything underneath those priorities is your number one priority. Because I'm telling you, ain't nobody got to pump you up about making no money. <laughs> ain't nobody got to pump you up about, on, you know, man. your job. Ain't yeah. nobody got to pump you up about things. Uh -huh. You know, nobody's to pump you up about, okay, come on. Let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. On three. Ready, break. Let's go shopping. Nobody has to give you a motivational speech about going shopping. Nobody has to give you a motivational speech about getting some new stuff. Ain't no, I ain't never seen a woman yet. They got to have a motivational speech about going to get her hair and nails done. I just, I just don't see that you need to do that. Watch out. You're going to do that. Watch out. Amen? Yes, sir. But God, getting on the prayer line, uh, studying your word, whoa. turning the TV off. That's unnatural. You know, all right, it's unnatural. That's why it's spiritual. Yes, sir. That which is spiritual is not natural. It is not natural to your flesh. You have to train your flesh to say, I'm seeking. Listen, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How to get myself right with God. And after that, my prayer life's going to be better. After that, every listen, my mind's going to be better. Yes, my body's going to be better. My money's going to be better. But first of all, I got to get my spirit right. Come on, church. Give God some praise. I got to get right with God. I got to get right with God. Somebody say, I got to get right with God. Let me get right on this message here. All right, listen. So we need faith to walk with God, to be right with God. And we need faith, of course, to fulfill our divine destiny in God. And what we said was destiny is, destiny is a pre- plan of your life, right? Yes. It's God's predetermined plan for your life. He has a, he, God, listen to this. Let me say it like this. God has already written your biography. Mm -hmm. He right. wrote it. Yes. He's already written your book. Yes, sir. He's written your book in all of its chapters. Now, I told you last week, I'm finishing up my autobiography, so I really can be touched with this, because I see life now as chapters. I mean, there are 45 chapters in this book that I'm finishing up, right? And guess what? It's actually only a third of my life. Wow. It's not even, it's just, it's interesting. Wow. But there's a lot of chapters in your life. So I see it like this now. I say, oh, this was, when I went through this, you think about your own life. When I worked in such and such, such place, that was a chapter. Right. You know, when I went to high school, right. that was a chapter. Right. When I met Jimmy and he wasn't no good, that was a chapter. I'm glad that chapter was. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But, but I'm just saying, these are all chapters. And then they're all building towards something. So now watch this. I have how many key statements? I have uh, five key statements for you today. First key statement is God has a divine destiny for you. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. In other words, He has a, a, a predetermined plan for your life. Key statement number two, God's divine destiny for you is good. Yeah. So he's a good God, and his plan for you is good. All right. Praise God. It makes sense, right? 
Yeah. Key step number three. You must receive God's divine destiny for you by faith. Yeah. Now, there it is again. There's that faith. There's that F word again. Uh -huh. That's the good F word right there. I like that F word. Right. <laughs> the 